tomorrow's Memorial Day. And so they kind of actually tie, it, tie together quite well in uh, how the Lord is working in and through uh, his world. This is his world. Amen. And so uh, we're glad that you came to worship with us today. And uh, I want to I want to do something. I'm going to just kind of uh, uh, play this up because at the end of the service, when we close the service out today, this uh, pot that I set up here doesn't have any money in it yet. We're actually taking up some. Uh, if you have a couple dollars or change or anything like that, we're wanting to buy some youth, our youth, some T-shirts for our ministry uh, called the Jesus Crew. And so, uh, if you don't have a dollar. If you have 50 cents, put 50 cents in, okay? And so what, it, what the idea is, is that we can represent what God is trying to do through our lives and in and through our lives. And so I'm going to put a little bit in there, and I'm going to challenge y'all to do that at the end of the service, to come down and put some offering in there, and we're going to buy t-shirts for them in a way that we can honor our youth. And uh, we, I noticed they all come forward. They're, they're really intent on hearing a good message today. Amen? <laughs> so... Uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're actually starting a new series today called Found Favor, and so I'm glad you're here because if I was young again, I would want to know how to find the favor of God. Amen? And so uh, God's found favor is an opportunity for us to walk in His blessings, to walk in His presence, and, and to be used by the power of God. And so if we go back into the uh, book of Acts and you find uh, at the very start, Pentecost. Something happened at Pentecost. Does anybody remember what happened? Huh? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, you know, go to this place and wait for this comforter, this presence of, of me, uh, of mine, and, and it, it is part of God. It, it is the power that will help you and comfort you and help you when things are not going so well. It is this comforter, the Holy Spirit, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it radically changed everything about their lives. It radically changed everything. Matter of fact, they were able to perform many miracles that just the disciples were able to perform many miracles because of God's power in them. Amen? And I'm here to tell you today that God's power in you is wanting to be revealed to this world in such a way that miracles happen in and through and around your life. Amen? And so, but let's first, I want to ask the question, what is favor? What is favor? Grace? Okay. Miss, Miss Kitty? Be believing without what? Sinning, okay. All right. Huh? Following the footsteps. God's mercy. It's interesting because God's favor, and it talks about the favor throughout Scripture, is actually uh, talked about in over 70 different places in the Bible, this favor of God. And, I, and I'm just going to kind of define it. All those things were right, but I want to add to it just, just a moment. God's favor is demonstrated delight. Demonstrated delight in your relationship. Okay, and that, so that could represent a lot of things. And so the favor of God can be described as the tangible evidence that a person has the approval of God. Okay, how many of you want God's approval today? I mean, we're, we're all here, we're worshiping, it's raining outside, it's Memorial Day weekend. You know, there's things we could have been doing, but we're here at church to learn to grow and hopefully find this favor and, and live in it in such a way that we delight in Him. So we connect with God's favor in, in some different ways. In Isaiah 66, 2, it says, These are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble, contrite in spirit, and tremble at my word. Okay? And so what I want to do real quick is I want to take you back in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Exodus, Exodus chapter 33, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 17. What is the book of Exodus about? Okay. It is where the Israelites, they're held in captive and they've been set free. And who is their leader? Who, Moses is called on the scene. We see the story of Moses and he goes and, he, and he's talking to God. Okay. And so in this scripture is a conversation between Moses and God. If you have your outline, it's in there. Actually, what I, it's a duplicate verse but it's, it's two different uh, uh, Bible versions. 
And I'm just going to read the top version. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. And so here Moses is, he's having a conversation with God, and in that conversation he said, you've called me to do this, but who are you, who are you sending to help me? How many of you have ever felt like God has called you to do something, but there isn't any help around? Anybody? I mean, if you've, if you've served in church, or if you've done anything around church very long, or even at, at your job or in, the, in, in this world, there are times when you just like, help me, you know, where's the help? Uh, it, it just kind of gets a hold of you that way. But it's interesting because in this conversation, Moses said, and God tells Moses, said, I have found that you are worthy of my favor. And so we're going to continue on. It says in verse 13, it says, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people's. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And so God, here God has had this conversation. He said, guess what, Moses? I'm not only calling you to do this, but I'm going with you. Yeah, I'm not leaving you out there to do this on your own. I'm going with you. You will fulfill. So I want to tell you right now, church, anytime God calls you to do something, his presence is with us. Amen? And his power is there. And he is going to show up. And so he doesn't always, we don't always have the tools to fulfill the mission, but with God's power and presence, the tools will be supplied. Amen? And we're going to continue in verse uh, 16. It says, How will anyone know that you, are, that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. I want God to know me by name. There's, this, there's actually a, a scripture in the New Testament that's a challenging scripture because it says, you've done this in my name, you've done this in my name, you've, you've helped people, you've fed the poor, you've cast out demons, you've healed people, but at the end it says, I never knew you. In other words, at the end, standing before, you've done all these good things in the name of the Lord with right motives, with not necessarily right motives, but the right idea, but at the end of the day, it says, I never knew you. I want God to know my name. Amen? I want God to know your name. I want him to know you intimately so well that he is delighted and demonstrates his delight in you throughout your walk. And so the favor of God is this. You can, if you have your outline, you'll have to write it in because it's not, there's a blank there. It says, the favor of God is the guarantee of his presence. Okay? The guarantee, write that word in, the guarantee of his presence. The second part to that is, the favor of God is the provision of his power. It's a guarantee of his presence, and it's the provision of his power. And then the last uh, blank on your outline is this. It's to accomplish his purpose in and through my life. Amen? It's to pr- uh, accomplish this. And so uh, every now and then, you know, I, I have a bad day every now and then. Anybody ever have a bad day every now and then? <laughs> and, okay. Uh, so, so every now and then I have a bad day, and it's so interesting if I like if I'm going somewhere, and I'll just use the use the idea of Walmart. If I go to Walmart and there is a parking spot at the very front, and I get that parking spot, I always think, man, that's the favor of God. <laughs> you know, I'm not having to walk, I'm not having to do all that, and that's just kind of a, a little thing I do with myself to encourage myself. Like, that's God demonstrating His delight in me. But I have to tell you something interesting about God's favor. And if we look throughout the Bible, if we study the Scriptures, and we go look at the people that God delighted in and the conversation and the relationship that they had, is that God's power was always demonstrated through them, but usually it, was, it took God's power to be demonstrated through them for the outcome to happen the way it happened. And more than more times than not, what happened is is that there was a challenging situation that took place that had to be defined through God's power. And so, you know, what we talk about in the scriptures is uh, is 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 really how God is working in the guarantee of provision. Is that if you think about Noah for a minute, what happened in the in the book of uh, in the book with Noah? What happened? The flood. Okay. 
What did Noah, what was the blessing, what was the favor of God that happened in Noah's life? The ark. Okay? So I want you to think about this. We know the flood happened, and we know that the ark had to, had to be built. So the favor of God in Noah's life was what? Hard work. I, I need you to get this, okay? Because at some time, somewhere in our life, somewhere there's a disconnect in our walk with the Lord to where we think if we walk in the favor of God, then everything is going to be perfect, and it's just going to happen unto us, and there's not work involved. And I'm telling you, God's favor requires a demonstration of our faith. Amen? And so the book of Noah, we see that there was that demonstration. They had to work. They had to build that ark. And then in the end, when the ark was built, they were saved, right? And so throughout Scripture, any, any book that you look at, we see that happening time and time again. And so in Psalms 5, verses 1 and 12, um, it, it says this. It says, but let all those rejoice who put trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you de- defer them And then it says, let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him with a shield. With a shield. With God's favor, we're surrounded with a shield. And so the first thing I want to talk to you about in in this idea is to expect God's favor. Look at someone and say, expect God's favor. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the, here's, the, here's the kind of the part to that that I've got to tell you in expecting. We, the, the same is true. When we start expecting God's favor, we need to understand how we expect it really determines our faith. Now, I expect God's favor in my life, but I don't expect it the way a lot of people expect it. I expect that I'm going to have God's favor because I am walking with God and He is walking with me. I am not expecting God's favor or some kind of uh, favor from God, okay? Sometimes where we get messed up, where we go through something, it may be a dark something, we go through challenges and trials in this life, and we expect blessings to come from our Lord, from our Savior, from God like a gift, like a blessing, like almost like, um, I don't know if you've heard anybody say this, like God's Santa Claus. Now, my relationship with God is I don't expect something from God but I expect his presence to be with me because of my faith and my trust in what he's done for me. Amen? And so when I walk with the Lord and he walks with me, I believe that God is surrounding me with his blessings, with his mercy, with his power. And as we see in this book of of Exodus where uh, Moses has been challenged to lead the people, people of Israel, how was God's power with them and his provision and blessing with them? Y'all remember the story? Okay? You want me to go through it? Is that what you're saying? Oh, it's the cloud. Yes, you had it. You should have just said it. (laughs) She went like this. It's the cloud, okay? (laughs) If you go back and read the story, when they're set free out of bondage and they're going out into the wilderness, God's presence, there is a cloud that is over them that is providing them with food, that is providing them with the provision of God. His presence with them is their security. And so they knew God was with them. And I believe that we can know, just like a cloud being over us, we can know that God's provision and presence is with us. Amen? And throughout throughout Scripture, we see when God's presence and power is with us, it changes everything. And even the disciples, it changed everything for the disciples because when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, they started doing some unusual things. And they started believing some things that Jesus had taught them that they didn't completely understand. Because the Spirit of God comes in and edifies the Scripture of God, and it reveals truth time and time again that God is wanting to use you and the disciples and me to change people's lives. The favor of God comes into your life, not just so you can be blessed, not just so that you can have, but it is the favor of God so that the world can be a better place to live. And that lives can be changed and lives can be impacted. Amen? So if we go back to the disciples, was God's favor with them just because they were the disciples? Was it? Was God's favor with the disciples just because they were the disciples, Brian? No. Why was God's favor with them? 
Because why? Why? He knew them by name. He knew them intimately. They had spent time with Christ. Therefore, they didn't have to have it figured out. Even if you think about Jesus, he was, he, he was the perfect example of finding his father's favor, but it ultimately led to what? His death. So the common denominator in all these is that none of what they accomplished would have been possible without the favor of God. And so that brings me really to my second point is this, is we need to recognize, open your eyes to the opportunity. Say, t- look at your neighbor and say, open your eyes. <laughs> See, that had more meaning than just this, at this scripture because some of us could be going to sleep at this point. So open your eyes and recognize, recognize that God is at work in and through and he's given us opportunity and we see through and through the favor of God working in the disciples. And we, in Proverbs 8, 35 says this, For those who find me, find wisdom, they find life, and they receive favor from the Lord. And so let me ask you again, how many of you want favor from the Lord? Okay. You want favor from the Lord, are you willing to do the work that comes after the favor? And so, you know, if you were to think about... An inheritance. What happens if I'm going to leave my kids an inheritance? How do they know what they're going to get? Huh? It's listed in what? My will. So if I want to leave an inheritance to my kids, I write out a will and I describe point blank what I want to do for each of my children, right? How do you think God leaves his inheritance to us? How did God spell out what he wants to do in our lives and through our lives? He did it in what? His will and testament, which is his word, his power, his mercy. He tells you exactly what you need to experience everything in life right here. Amen? In his perfect word. And so we're, we're going to walk in God's favor. We're gonna, God's going to be delighted in us, through us, not because of what he wants to necessarily bless us with, but what he wants to do through our lives. And so... If we think about how do, I, how do I need to open my eyes to God demonstrating his favor and delighting himself in me today? How do I need to open my eyes to that? Todd, are you, gonna, you may want to go change. Have you changed already? Go ahead and do that, brother. <laughs> and we do that by demonstrating. And so Todd in a minute is actually going to be baptized. And so that is one way. We take advantage of the opportunity, and we recognize the opportunity that's before us. And then the third thing is we respond to the call of God, and we respond to his will by living a a life that is different than what we used to live. And so Moses said this, in Hebrews 11.25 says of Moses, it says, He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. It said, When the same can be said for us, we now... Uh, we know we have found the favor of God. He delights in us through demonstration. Okay? So, I want you to think about something. How has your life demonstrated the favor of God? Or how could it demonstrate the favor of God? Maybe it hasn't completely demonstrated it to this point. But how could it be demonstrated? How could your life, you are the only version of you, how could you live your life in such a way that it demonstrates God's work in and through my life, my heart, my mind, my soul? How can I give myself to God in such a way that I honor Him today? Donna? Teaching Sunday school. Teaching Sunday school. All right. They just came down from Sunday school. She's been teaching. So, Seth? By ministering, by sharing his word, by, by being his word and living that out in faith. And so there are all kinds of opportunities. You have, a, you have something? By sharing, it with someone by sharing it with someone that doesn't know God. High five right here. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is it. <clears throat> Walking in the favor of God is a testimony. Does that mean that we're all perfect in here? No, it means we're far from perfect. God wants to walk with you daily. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to get to know you. He wants you to get to know Him. 
He wants you to understand that He has made an investment in you. Do you understand that? I mean, do you understand what it is to give up your son for someone? Do you understand what it means to lay down your life so that someone could be free, so that someone doesn't have to be uh, in, in bondage of self no more, so someone doesn't have to be bound up in their, uh, a, a bad relationship or hungry? I mean, what does it mean to be sacrificial? What does it mean? I mean, the Lord teaches us that you are valuable, that every one of you are His masterpieces. <laughs> 